A very good afternoon and welcome back to the program. This is the touchline on Y254. My name is Maxwell Wasike. We're reviewing what is happening in South Africa as far as Cape Town 7 is concerned. The second leg of HSBC World 7 series currently underway. Kenya looking pretty sure to qualify to the main cup quarters after their victories against Samoa yesterday and against Australia this particular afternoon. Remember they are playing their last clash uh, against Ireland at 5.47 p.m. East African time. And of course we're going to delve straight into what is happening. Baris Silla, a robust sports journalist alongside Fred Openda, our residential guest analyst. Joining us this particular afternoon, gentlemen, good to have you on board. Barry, what's good, man? Everything is good. Uh, I think uh, sports-wise we're doing well. This weekend looks really lively. Uh, especially going by what Kenya Sevens is doing and even locally I think there's a lot of stuff going on. That's Fred man, it's been a minute. It's been what a have you been up to? Uh, a lot of issues man, uh, but I'm happy to be back and uh, <coughs> it's always getting spotty on Saturday afternoons and uh, since we have uh, plenty of uh, sporting activities in store, rugby sevens, we have the EPL, we have the KPL, uh, we have the Sekafa. We have the Sekafa. So it's 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 uh, really uh, looking up uh, uh, good. Uh, the weekend is up and running, and hopefully and, and you we know, enjoy it. You know, <laughs> blend of Christmas mood. Exactly. And, uh, you know, talking about sports, it's just epic. Yes. You know, let's talk about what is happening in South Africa as far as Cape Town Seven is concerned. Yeah. The coming on board of the heavyweights, the regulars. Yeah. Uh, do you think it's given the national team that much needed impetus? Yeah, it was needed. It was much needed because you remember what happened in Dubai. That was unexpected. Finishing 13th. Uh, performance was really dismal. I'm, I don't remember the last time we performed this poorly. But now they noticed, uh, the team management noticed and brought the, the old guards on board. And now you see what's happening. A comp uh, competitive game against Samoa, a very competitive game against um, against Australia. And they've done perfectly well. I think this, this, this group uh, was really tight and it was, it was for us uh, a chance to, 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 to redeem ourselves and so far we've done really well. Yes. You know our history when it comes to recycling coaches, hiring and firing. Paul Finney is in charge, having taken over from Paul Murunga. This small show, just like he said, horrible performance during the first leg in Dubai. This time around, is he redeeming himself? Of is course. He up to the task? Of course. And, and I think uh, he came into his senses and uh, realized that, you know, going into these matches, we need experience. And that's why they went back and uh, called, let's say, the old guard uh, to bring that much needed experience. Uh, because during the first leg, we saw a few. Uh, a few faces who did not have the sevens, the, the series uh, experience. But now having the old guard on board, then trust me, uh, maybe in the afternoon, then uh, this evening, we may be uh, show, uh, showing what we did uh, yesterday and this morning. Andrew Amond has given 100% commitment to the national team. You remember even during that time of you know, contractual dispute between the playing unit and Kenya Rugby Union, you know, when uh, heavyweights had, you know, absconded yeah. Uh, their duty that's yeah. Colin Sinjera, William Baka, you know, the likes of Osko Uma, yeah. Samuel Liech, yeah. Billy Odiambo. Andrew Amondo was available for the national team and he's been, you know, sensational for even his club, that is KCB, during Kenya Cup campaign. Is he, is he the key behind this I, breakthrough? I agree. I think uh, Andrew, first of all, is a, is a natural born leader and is a role model. You remember, he doesn't, he, as a leader, sometimes you. You cover up for some of the misgivings of the rest of the team so he's done pretty well during the time the last leg when um, uh, when some of the the, the heavyweights the big wigs were missing he led the youngsters is there right again he's, he's, he's naturally leading from the front and this is a, a very important person in the middle of of, of 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 the team even if he doesn't perform naturally you know you want a leader who commands respect among the peers and that's what andrew is doing currently the absence of Colin Sinjera, of course, he's back in the team, but on the sidelines due to an injury, is not featuring uh, during the Cape Town Sevens. Do you think his unavailability is, uh, you know, uh, sort of positive in these guys to another player who might come on board to replace him? Uh, I've never had this um, <laughs> this feeling that uh, an injury to a player might be a positive uh, <laughs> a positive vibe to another player. But it does. You remember you remember in English Premier League football <laughs> yes. when Marcus Rashford came on board. Yes. I think that time when United was suffering from uh, a situation where several of their players were injured and therefore Luis Van Gaal had to bring him on board and that is against how he Arsenal, uh, he scored uh, on his uh, uh, full premier debut and yes. all that. But I uh, remember what, what, what I'm trying to say is the injury 
sorry, but <laughs> <laughs> because now we, we, we are really missing um, his experience in that squad. Uh, but uh, still, as you've said, uh, other players need to step up and fill that uh, void. We saw during the 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 the, 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 the rugby uh, was it Kenya. Uh, when he was still, uh, he was on the on the coaching bench. Yes. We were at um, Ngong Road. Yes. Uh, he had that influence in the team. You know, uh, uh, giving During advice. Safari Sevens? Exactly, Safari Sevens. So uh, I think him uh, being on the sidelines still helps because he'll still coach the young ones, maybe from the bench, those who are there for the subs and all that. But for the squad, we are going to really miss his experience. And by the way, in uh, other modern and civilized countries, yeah. you know, uh, uh, player of uh, Colin Sinjera's caliber and pedigree, despite yeah. the fact that he's injured, he would have traveled with the team just to give them morale. Yeah. How comes it's not happening in Kenya? <laughs> well, I think, I don't know. I, I, Is I, it because I, of resources? I hate to play the devil's advocate, <laughs> but I think sometimes they like they want to cut costs. If you're not really fit, you're not going to add any value. But like he said, uh, the experience, even on the touchline uh, for a player like Collins, is very key. Uh, you can imagine, for example, if, 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 uh, Andrew wasn't there. The, the next senior player, I think, is Collins. Yes. So we need experience to, to help the other boys push on even when times are thick, when things are not going the right way. These guys are critical. So even if Collins was on the bench uh, alongside the technical guys, it would have really made a difference. And uh, you know, there has been a, several revelations within the team. The youngsters, Daniel Tabu, Johnston Olindi, you know, Billy the Kid of Diambo, the former Strathmore University student. And of course, they have been pivotal to the team. Do you think that blend of youth and experience has also been of much importance? Exactly. It is very, very much important because, you know, uh, this is a team and it's a going concern. Because if you're going to have only the, the, the experienced players in the squad, what if uh, Magoti Kikata, who, who, <laughs> whom do you bring on board? So this experience, uh, the, the experience of the young ones uh, in, in, in the squad, when they blend with the, the, the veterans, is really helpful going, uh, uh, going forward uh, when now we'll uh, need to change that squad uh, bit by bit. Because definitely these guys are going to retire, the veterans are going to retire, then the young ones, uh, having gained that experience, will be able to step up and uh, put the Kenyan um, uh, Kenya Sevens team uh, where it's supposed to be in the rugby uh, Sevens map. Squad selection, I know you've covered uh, school games yeah. and uh, there are those schools associated with, you know, rugby, they are yeah. powerhouse when yeah. it comes to matters rugby, Maseno, you yeah. know, Kakamega High School. Mm -hmm. Do you think now the scouting team of Kenya Rugby Union should go to the grassroots and start uh, and sporting players who will you know, replace the aging category of players yeah, like Injera, Monde, Ambaka. I, I believe there's a development uh, unit at KRU. They, yes, they, they, they I think Malim Kombo is in charge. Yeah, yeah, they look at, they work in close liaison with KSSA, Kenya Secondary School Sports Association, and the individual coaches of these uh, schools like Lenana, St. Mary, Stratman, all these big wigs. And uh, at the same time, uh, for, for the past couple of years, KRU has invested a lot through the servant circuit. They use, they, they use those seven... The national seven yeah, circuits, yeah, the yeah. Dallas sevens, yeah. Driftwood. The they use those circuits to spot emerging talent. You realize every year there's always a different kind of emerging talent in the national team. I think that's also very important, but the base is always the schools. It's important to start from picking them and growing them, starting uh, picking them, taking them to Chipu, the, the junior yes. team, and then as they come up the, to the, the upper ranks, that's how it's supposed to be, basically, yes. You agree? Yeah, I agree, of course, because I remember last time uh, when you had you you had the KRU chairman uh, yes. here. He, he actually he did mention some of the players that he had spotted, uh, and I think uh, having that development unit at KRU really helps because. Uh, going to the grassroots uh going to the high school uh the, the big wins uh in, in rugby then uh we'll be able to uh maybe give the team uh, that development team opportunity to maybe pick out the standout players and then uh bring uh try to bring them uh into the 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 the, the, the young squad of uh of the kenya rugby uh because uh if we are not going uh to the grassroots to, to spot these kids, uh, where will we be seeing them? And then uh, I, I think uh, another challenge for the, t for the uh, development team at KRU might be the facilitation. You know, these things uh, need fac facilitation, and this is, of course, money-wise, because uh, we saw issues uh, past a couple of uh, 
months uh, concerning financial issues, uh, let's say financial issues uh, concerning care you. So if we are going to get good facilitation and a good team uh, uh, at care you, then we are going to support these kids and uh, bring them on board. Yeah. Definitely. Of course, you can get in touch and send your feedback via 2162 starting with the word touch be part of the program as well. Mohamed Okola is watching, of course, Mohamed Okola. I remember your days at Multimedia University. You are they had support of the sports. What are your comments with regards to Matas Rugby locally? Of course, he's watching from Riverside in Nairobi alongside Quincy, Rose, and Abdallah. Oh my goodness, a huge battalion watching the program. Anyway, the second leg of HSBC in Cape Town, what has been your standout moment? Well, I was uh, <laughs> asking, uh, did we really uh, uh, defeat Samoa? <laughs> so I but think nowadays, I think Samoa are beatable. They are beatable, but remember... And so are Fijians. Exactly, but remember our performance in the first leg. That's why yes, I was yes. wondering... During Dubai 7. <laughs> yes, yes. So I was, I was uh, surprised. And uh, uh, if, if we're really going uh, to go up against Ireland uh, this evening... Maybe that might be my my my. And my, Ireland, my, my I think they did beat Australia yesterday. Yes, mm -hmm. and it was tipped as a game of underdogs yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, surprising outcomes. Yeah. Anyway, I spoke to Dor Gangra, the president of Kenya Rugby Union, mm -hmm. just before this leg, and he said that you know now the problem of unpaid allowances is something of the past. Mm -hmm. You think that has also motivated the boys to perform better? Yeah, I believe so. If, if it means his word, then uh, uh, definitely. Uh, Monetary uh, uh, support is very key to, yes. to, 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 to in such disciplines. But also, uh, maybe to support what my friend has said here, I think uh, the boys, uh, uh, they learned a lot from what happened in Dubai. And maybe they got a kick on the behind to, to, to improve their performance. And what I, I've also noticed, I think, after watching the game against Samoa, there, there's key technical areas or bits that they've improved on, the ball handling and defense. So. I think we learn as we go. If we, if we are able to beat uh, Ireland, then I can assure you this main cup uh, they will, will, will be a, a, a force to reckon with. We'll probably go all the way. If, if it's too bad, maybe the same is yes. Dan Norton, all time try score, of course, closely followed by Colin Sinjera. Yes, Those yes. separated with uh, a good number of tries, but with by the fact that now the edge is catching up with our very own. Do you think he will, he, will he try to? get closer and reduce that gap uh yeah i think uh he still got it in him uh, sometimes if unless your legs refuse to move mm -hmm. but he still got it in him with the experience he's got a good team around him good support i think he can still improve and, and, and extend his his numbers up there is the technical bench of kenya paul Fini being assisted by kevin wambua his presence on the bench, you know, he's also been in charge of local side Mamba, yeah. RFC, mm -hmm. if I'm not ladies, wrong, and also lionesses. the Kenya Lionesses. Yeah. Do you think he adds that much needed spice? Exactly. It, it because really of his understanding of the local uh, of the players. local players, uh, yeah. I think he really adds a lot uh, to that technical bench because if he knows these players, and you know, being a technical bench is not about making decisions on your own. Uh, People around uh, around Fini uh, who know the players, uh, the local players, who follow these players out there, uh, they will be able to add uh, a, a big chunk of uh, of advice uh, to what uh, Fini, although. He's the most experienced on that bench. Uh, I mean, he's got a lot of experience. So, I, for them, understanding the local game really adds a lot to 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 Fini's uh, thinking and maybe team selection. So I think also Wambua is, is well known to these players. Some of these players, when he was at Mwamba and he's coaching, he knows a lot about the, 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 even the politics of the, of the game and, and, and uh, the mood of the game, the mood of the players, and how probably he's, he's been put there to, to try and talk the language of the players because he understands. And some of them he played alongside them. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Uh, so Wambua is well known locally, so he's adding a lot of value to that extent, yes. It's being played in South Africa, and you yeah. know when we mentioning matters international rugby, yeah. South Africa is such a powerhouse. Yeah. Uh, do you think they will? It will remain the title will remain at home. Yeah, after after what <laughs> they did in the World Cups, uh, World Cup. Uh, but but you know, you, you remember the dynamics of 15s yeah, and 7s. Yeah, yeah, people yeah. always say that yeah. you know, 15s yeah. mm -hmm. is real rugby, 7s is, really yeah. is cosmetics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but 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 you remember, there's a time when in the 7s rugby, South, South Africa was ranked first. 
at some point. So uh, the likes of Cecil Africa playing yes. there was a decline. So these guys. He was in Kenya during Safari Seven. Yes, yes, yes. So I can assure you, South Africa is still as a host. And as a team with experience, it will still be among uh, the teams to go all the way to the main cup uh, finals and maybe win it. And for my money, I'd put them maybe <laughs> in the finals if at the worst losing. In I the final open is behind <laughs> the old blacks of New Zealand, <laughs> <laughs> aren't you? No, no, not really, not really. Uh, South Africa playing at home, and uh, as you've said, uh, the heroics they they did show at the the World Cup. Yes, yeah. I think they, it might give them the, a little bit more motivation. Beating England, uh, yes, and having that uh, we call it sevens, but now having that eighth <laughs> player, yeah, uh, yes, if we can yes, put it yeah, so yeah. Uh, in the in the home fans, mm. then I, I think. Um, as uh, he's saying, then they might be able to go all the way, at least mm. losing the final. Yeah. Yes. The, the general organization of HSBC World 7 Series, yes. you know the crowds yeah. in the stands, mm. man, the hype around it, the yeah. publicity, the marketing aspect of the game. Yeah. Is Kenya ready to host one of the legs well, one day in the future? Uh, maybe not so soon. Uh, we are in Africa, maybe, or in the emerging countries, we are among the, the, the top countries but of course uh, the, the organizers will look at your 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 your, your facilities of course, we don't yeah. have uh, there's always been this talk of putting up a, a rugby uh, facility in along Gong Road. It's never ha ma really materialized. But if we had that, and maybe the road in Gong Road expanded, then or maybe host one in Kasarani, mm -hmm. you know, this they look at a lot of dynamics. Uh, the organizers they look at the the, the logistics, yes, yes. transport, and everything um, uh, for their crew, for the media, for everyone. I think it's 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 going to take quite a bit for us. Maybe time. Kasarani. Yeah, maybe Kasarani. Mm -hmm. But we have to work on other things, logistics, security. They look at a lot of things because you're not only bringing the teams, you're bringing the media the and the crowd. Mm. And someone used to tell me that, you know, a stadium is not about no. playing surface. No, no. Yeah, yeah. The other entities around exactly. the stadium, yeah, changing yeah, rooms, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Yeah. entertainment yeah. zones. Security mm -hmm. also is very key. Very paramount, actually. Yeah. And so considering that, you know, Kenyans are so passionate and enthusiastic about RFUA grounds in that when a rugby game is not getting hosted there, they wouldn't show up in large <laughs> numbers. Yeah. I think it's because of its central location. Yeah. But, and the tradition, I, th the I think, tradition, the tradition yeah. of, the, of rugby. But uh, still, if, if we can have those facilities uh, put in place, and, uh, and this is a challenge to, to, to Mr. Duo Gangler, yes. because if, if he comes up at least with a plan and then maybe uh, and try to uh, push it forward uh, and maybe we improve these uh, facilities uh, the rugby facilities then in the future maybe maybe we might be hosting one of the Legs, this yeah. the biggest tournament the seventh to tournament because yeah. if we don't have the facilities logistics wise we are poor then no one is will be willing to to come over to kenya to, to watch rugby so we have to work on uh, some of these uh, um, uh, items uh, logistics wise and facilities i think but but is it the role of federation honchos to ensure that facilities are in place no. is indeed the, the function of the government it's, yeah it's it, I but think you have I, to push it yeah they need True. to work, mm. work together yeah. the ministry and the federation and and uh, i think because like last time, yeah. Chan was not hosted in Kenya. We yeah. couldn't blame Nick Mwenda for the yeah. failure by Kenya to host the tournament meant for local best players. It was Kenya's failure yes. in your sports. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I, I think uh, facilitation is, is first and foremost government's role because they own the, the resources through the Ministry of, of, of Sports. Uh, what, what needs to happen? Here, I don't know why people usually compare golf where we own the magical Kenya <laughs> or, or uh, the rally which, which is coming back. And it's because some of these federations really know how to push. Exactly. And they know how to publish, uh, mm. do publicity and market themselves. That's why uh, you'll see a lot of, uh, they get a lot of high-end mm. events coming through. Like right now in, in, in Vipingo, there's a ladies tour, mm -hmm. uh, golf tour going on. It's because KGU really pushed that. Yes. Uh, if, if uh, in this case, KRU can push for resources to come, because in World Rugby, they are ranked somewhere high up there, and they push the ministry then why not? The, the, the ministry can always cough some money, so they put uh, the necessary uh, resources, and then visitors will come and the game will be played. But there has been back and forth between the Ministry of Sports and the federations over, you know, funding and the debacles surrounding yeah. the same is still on. To an extent that, you know, <laughs> Kenya, when they were traveling to Dubai, there were reports indicating that Kenya was uh, almost failing to go participate because of 
you know, lack of resources until government came to the rescue of the team uh, uh, during the last minute. How comes there has to be this pressure demand for as, government to deliver? As, 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 as I was telling you earlier when we were off air, it's all about uh, are, you, are, are you able to show, showcase what you've done with the resources? Are you accountable? Because if we have that culture of being accountable of whatever funds that uh, we, we, we might be able to get, uh, then trust me, no one will be hesitating to maybe come on board when you need funds. Because right now, uh, uh, KRU is looking for sponsors. Yes. Uh, 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 and uh, if you are not uh, accountable, then no one is willing to put his money on where people will just uh, misuse it and maybe end up in people's pockets. Uh, and this culture is something we just need to start from somewhere. Uh, the, 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 small, the small funds, the, 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 the less funds that these federations get, uh, try to use them uh, in, in, in a, a way that uh, everyone is able to agree uh, that they have been used properly. Yes. And this culture, if it starts from somewhere, not even the government, corporates will come in and we'll be able to see uh, some of these things changing and getting more more more, more facilities which which will enable uh, our sports to grow yeah there's also if to add to what he's saying there's always the, i think government likes to look at the development and mm -hmm. they, they like to pour money maybe on the development programs of, of an organization so that for the elite elite uh, projects like let's say the main team like shuja or simba for for instance if 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 care you can put itself in order and organize uh, proper uh, corporate support, then they can support it. But for a big project like um, like hosting an event, you you, you need you, care you, for example, doesn't have the resources to put up to buy land and put up, you know, a, 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 a state of their stadium. Definitely, they need to push the government, but they need to push the government when the government sees that they are able to do things the right way. Like you said, accountability is one of them. But uh, even in football circles, we hear that FC Leopard and Gurma, top clubs locally, mm. have acquired land. Actually, they were given free land by the former president, Daniel Moy, but nothing tangible has come out of it. I don't know whether those reports are true. They are yet to be substantiated, mm. but I hear <laughs> what's yeah, on yeah. the corridor. Yeah, uh, I think also... Uh, so sometimes I think it's the prerogative of the individual yeah, entities yeah. themselves to do something true, on true, their own. True, it's, uh, it's Remember, it's also a lot of pressure, like for the clubs you just mentioned. Everybody's on your neck, the fans and everybody... And, and some of because sometimes they contribute, so they want yeah. to see their money, uh, yeah. how it's uh, getting well spent. Accountability. Yes. <laughs> some of these processes are very difficult, yes. but like we have all agreed, accountability is the key. Yeah. Accountability is the key. Anyway, you are general thoughts with regards to world rugby, local rugby as well. I know Kenya Cup is on, mm -hmm. and uh, Cabras not doing badly. Yeah. Off. Yeah, I remember, I don't know if they're still on cloud nine after their first ever <laughs> win against KCB. <laughs> and I know KCB, the next time they'll meet, you know, uh, 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 Coach Curtis is, 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 like, is like a tiger. Is a, no, Curtis. Uh, or or Lago. Is, he will make sure he'll correct that beat and Cabras will never beat him again. <laughs> but but Cabras is doing well. I think uh, this Kenya Cup season, they look uh, to be a good contender alongside, of course, uh, Kenya Commercial Bank. Let's see how the Queens and the Nondis will be doing this season. What happened to Oboe's Rugby Football Club? They were dominant some time back two years ago, but since Paul Murunga left the club to be in charge of the national team, I think the standards have really dwindled. I don't know. And that's why the coaching aspect comes in. If you lose some of the of your best uh, people then you're going yes. to go down that transition uh, yes and uh, concerning Cabras and kcb i remember during the last leg of uh, of uh, of kenya cup yes uh, last time i was i was in mombasa in mombasa so during, i met, it was driftwood seven yes exactly driftwood seven so i was going to mombasa and then we happened to be uh, on the same bus with uh, the cabras pl uh, players so i was uh, asking uh, them are, are you going to face kcb <laughs> <laughs> because they had trashed them uh, in Western Cape. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, so uh, they, they said, we'll give our best. Uh, but now it seems that they, they put their house in order and they, yeah. they got their win. But uh, uh, the Queens might be uh, planning something to to maybe uh, uh, give a fight back. And uh, I, think, uh, I, think, <laughs> I think that rivalry between KCB and Cabras, uh, I think is much needed in local rugby. Exactly. It's yeah. much needed in local rugby. Remember, boy, back it was always... 
Kenya Harlequins are nondescript. Uh, the the Ngong Road bass clubs. Derby, and also Mwamba and Impala. You know, it was basically mm-hmm. Ngong Road. Now with the emergence of guys like Homeboys, KCB really coming up, and Cabras are down the west. Uh, I think it's it's much needed competition. Uh, and even even uh, the Enterprise Cup, uh, mm-hmm. as tight competition as well. And this is what we need for club rugby, basically. Yes. But now, I keep asking myself some question. I remember attending some game. It was you know, raining heavily and the fans had turned up in large numbers. But, you know, we're just coming to spectate the game, enjoy the beautiful action. But ultimately, the prize money for the winner, yeah. that money is so little, man. Yeah, I know. And this is something some of these organizers must work on. Remember also, maybe, sorry, even... By the way, yeah. is there a cash prize in the first place for Kenya Cup champions? No, I think it's only a trophy. It's only a trophy? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but when you look at the money you put in, in terms of uh, basically, uh, uh, for example, if it's sevens, the, yes. the, the main sponsor will sponsor the legs, of course. But uh, I think KRU needs to put strong monetary. Uh, they, I think they need to get the sponsor in the first place uh, yeah. for Kenya Cup. Yes, for Kenya Cup itself, because all the clubs have their own shots. Yes, the yes. And then now the, the, the sponsor of Kenya Cup will obviously put monetary uh, support to, to the club winner and maybe the most valuable player yes, and, and stuff like that. Uh, so this is very important in terms of the motivating and driving these young players. And, and, and I think, I think Fredo Penda would agree with me that uh, rugby has got most loyal fans in Kenya. Exactly. Yeah. Because despite the harsh weather conditions, they will show up in drops up, yeah. to watch the game. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You saw during the Safari Sevens, yeah. the, the, the conditions were, it was so cold, but yeah. we still made it to, 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 the, to the ground. So uh, once we, we, we have seen that our, our rugby fans are, are very, very loyal and they're willing to come to the stadiums, why not try to improve, as, uh, uh, as my friend is saying, because we need to find more sponsors and maybe have those monetary prizes. And it, it gives more motivation to, to the players. And this will bring that rivalry. This rivalry, in turn, brings uh, the, the, the fans to the stadiums to, watch, to enjoy the beautiful game. Yeah, I know we are three of us here. I support Western Bulls. <laughs> I'm sure he supports Kisumu RFC. You support Kisi RFC. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the teams we're talking about and the teams we uh, allegedly supporting are on the downfall. Western Bulls are back in top flight, but they look like they will be relegated again. Kis- Kisi RFC is playing in the championship. Yeah, division one. Yes. Uh, okay. What's the problem of uh, this? First of all, this, uh, you realize most of the clubs in the championship are outside Nairobi. Most of the clubs uh, that are in the Kenya Cup are in Nairobi, and that tells you, first of all, rugby is grown, grown and developed in Nairobi. This is where the resources and maybe the money mm-hmm. is. Down there, you'd be surprised. Some a team like Kisumu RFC, maybe they have to go and talk to Governor Nyongo, give us money for shirt sponsorship, or maybe talk to Silverstone just for the jersey. They actually literally struggle uh, for, 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 it's like overall in Kenya, it's not, uh, rugby is not a professional sport. People play it mostly for fun and for, as a hobby. Uh, so out there, like clubs in Meru, let's say in Kisumu, in Nanyuki, in Mombasa, most of them really struggle. There's no really uh, monetary support. The only person, club outside Nairobi that really, I think, is making uh, good moves is the club in Nakuru. Uh, Menengai or Menengai, 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 Yes. yes. Mm. They are, they, 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 the owners, the management, the owners have put good money there. But the rest of the clubs, they're struggling financially. Yes. But what are you doing in your personal capacity? <laughs> <laughs> to bring back <laughs> KCRFC. <laughs> so, sometimes uh, on a personal on a personal ground, it might be difficult. Yes, but, I know. Uh, yeah. So it's it's all about uh, now. We have the developed uh, units of government. Mm. Uh, from these units of government, we need now people who can uh, try to come in and give advice and try to give that support and uh, maybe uh, uh, tell these guys that you know what uh, rugby is a good game and we can maybe. Uh, put develop, uh, development units in our counties and, and, and see whether we can maybe uh, nurture that talent, mm-hmm. uh, the rugby talent. Uh, and, and from this, uh, we, you give employment, actually. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's all about people now coming together and putting their heads together and try to give advice to the developed units as well. Fair enough. Quality conversation with uh, Barry Silla, a robust sports journalist, and Fredo Penda, our residential guest analyst, talking about the state of rugby with focus of 
to Cape Town 7, the second leg of HSBC World 7 Series. Kenya doing pretty well, of course, looking forward to qualification to the main cup quarters. After a horrendous show during the first leg in Dubai, where they finished 13th, just managing to collect four points. Remember, they beat Samoa yesterday, 29 14. Yeah. Then today, of course, they beat uh, Australia 12-7. Looking forward to play that third group clash against Ireland, which uh, kicks off at 5.47 p.m. East African time. We're going to be keeping an eye on that and see how it pans out. Remember, Kenya is also in action. Playing Zanzibar this particular afternoon, Sekafa Senior Challenge Cup happening in Tanzania. Looking forward to humiliate on what the uh, Starlet did to win the championship overall. Of course, Francis Kimanzi out on the touchline after that ban from Sekafa. A lot is happening. Remember English Premier League in action as well tomorrow. Big clash. Super Sunday. Everton against Man United. Then later on Arsenal will be playing against Manchester City. How about we take a short break? Then we will be back with the fan favorite segment. The fan zone. Don't go away. Stay tuned. It's the touchline.